Howdy! In this video, I'm going to show you the software setup on my NAS, or Network Attached Storage Unit. Uh, it's going to involve a little bit of, I think it's called MDADM, um, and some cron jobs in RSync, also NFS. So, if you haven't seen the hardware segment of my uh, build, I would check that out. I think it's just called a Scrap NAS Build, or the world's cheapest NAS, or something similar to that. Before I describe my software setup, I should probably explain what RAID is. So, in this case, uh, we're just going to have our little pink sharpie represent data, and kind of go on a very simplified explanation of the basic types of RAID. So RAID 1 is like mirroring and these are horribly uh, written hard drives. So it's pretty much just going to mirror the data on both drives. They'll be exactly identical. On RAID 0 the data is essentially kind of striped. So it reads from one drive, reads from the other, reads from one drive, reads from the other. So you can get improved disk speeds and twice the capacity. So, assuming these drives are both 500 gigabytes, you would get, you know, one terabyte and a better disk read speed. So, let's move on to RAID 1.0 or RAID 1 plus 0. So, oh my god, it's going to be a little bit hard to represent here, but let's zoom out a little bit. And in this situation, you would have striping. So let's say these are striped. But you would also have mirroring. So it would essentially be the same data over here. So you get redundancy and speed. But you also have to use like four hard drives. So let's get on to RAID. 3 dot 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 6, you know, there's like RAID 5 and things like that too. So, pretty much uh, multiple drives and parity. So, let me go on to my parity bit example up here really quick. So, this is probably not how it's done on the hard drives, because I imagine they're dealing with blocks and things like that, but we're going to give a basic example of parity with even or odd parity, and in this case I chose even. So, if you count the numbers up here, one, you know, there's one one, two ones, three ones, four ones, five ones, on that seven bits. Now the eighth bit, because there's five, is going to make it six. So, when you run a modulus 2 on it, it will equal 0. And modulus 2 is pretty much just a way of saying it's even. So on this line, there's only two of them. So that parity bit's is 0, modulus 2 is still 0. Then on this line, it's a 1, 1, and a 0. And this equals 1, so it will be false. So, with parity, you're able to detect errors, and it can actually rebuild if there's a drive failure. So, in multiple hard drive setups, you can use, like, RAID 5 or something like that to actually rebuild your array after a disk failure. And that is also possible with RAID 1, but as you can tell, with RAID 1, you're essentially losing half the capacity because out of these two 500 gigabyte drives you're going to be stuck with 500 gigabytes not one terabyte like in RAID 0. Okay so now that I'm done with my oversimplification of RAID I probably should explain a few things here so well cron jobs are pretty much just a script that will run at a specified time of day based off the information, like if you pull up cron tab. So, essentially it's just a script, runs at a specified time, and that's what you need to know for this. Because I'm about to go on the diagram of my software setup, and also rsync, which just takes 
files from one location and syncs them with another directory. It can be done over the network and things like that. A lot of cool things you can do with rsync. I've used it before. It's actually how I manage my websites. So I guess um, on a final note, uh, I'm probably just going to say RAID 1 is a kind of, I doubt my uh, cron job mirroring sort of uh, system is exactly the same as RAID 1, but I do actually have a proper-ish RAID 1 set up using MDADM on two of the drives. So let's get into the setup. Okay, let's start at the very top here, which is the actual drives in units of gigabytes. So we got one 500 gigabyte drive, another 500 gigabyte drive, 1000 gigabyte drive, one 2000 gigabyte drive, and one 4000 gigabyte drives. I'm going to be using MDADM to RAID two of those 500 gigabyte drives in RAID 1 which of course is going to cut down on my original capacity of 8 terabytes by about 500 gigabytes, but I'll have some redundancy. Now the other interesting thing is I kind of want a RAID 1 or mirroring like setup on more of the drives and I don't want it to be a finite size. So I'm going to use a cron job, which is essentially just a script that runs whenever you tell it and I set it to run once a day at 9.10. Well, AM, because that's when I was awake and setting this up. So, basically, the two 500 gigabyte drives and the rest of them will have this one folder called cron raid x5 that will be raided across all the hard drives because with uh, salvaged hard drives and your data you can never be too careful so we'll also have one cron raid x2 of a variable size and i'm just calling it cron raid but anyways that will be rated between the one terabyte drive up here and the well actually not the four terabyte drive the two terabyte hard drive so in summary, if you want to take a look at the diagram, we can zoom out a little bit. How I'm going to be doing that is a cron job and rsync. And I made a little smiley face to make my diagram seem a little bit nicer, I don't know. Okay, let's see it in action and actually look at some of the scripts. So in this case, um, all I have to do is type in sudo and then mount, specify the type of mount as nfs which is the software we're going to be using to actually access our network drive and the IP address followed by the NFS directory and I'm going to be mounting it on slash mount. So I'll just put in my password here and we should have a little directory in slash mount that shows our files and I've also created a little file called status that's updated by the cron job and if you go to vim status we can see how much is being used in each of the drives so as you can tell a 1% usage on 500 uh, GB RAID 1 which is the name of uh, one of the drives for a rated drive and then we have two terabyte internal and four terabyte external. These are just the directories they're mounted on and to get this all you have to do is type in df and the hard drive that it's installed in which I'm not quite sure will work over NFP so in this case it's actually just displaying the use it while well, it's displaying the file system as NFP, so I'm not quite sure this is accurate, so let's open SSH. The first thing I'm going to show you is the NFT config, which is in vim, then slash etc, exports. Well, uh, vim's opening it, but uh, yeah. 
slash etc exports directory. So the first part here is just uh, backup drives, which is our directory that we uh, mounted earlier. Then it's just a specification of the IP range. Here we have a little bit of a uh, network mask thing here. So 255, 255, 255.0. If we were to change this value over here to a zero and then change this one to a zero, I believe that would allow us to connect on two blocks of IPs. But anyway, so uh, we have read write specified and you're able to edit the files. So from there, uh, I guess we should check out the actual network config on this. I did do a video earlier if you're doing a public server where you can actually see how to make a relatively secure one a while back and host multiple sites on Apache. I believe I rolled all that one into one, but since this is on a local network, I'm pretty lax with security. So we can just, uh, we'll just type in ls here and Oh, actually, we. So we're going to change directories to slash backup drives and type in ls. So at the moment, the uh, if you take a look at status again, you can see that, uh, well, it's actually showing the proper usage for each drive and for the file system and we got the most important thing here which is our the amount of that we're currently using so let's uh, take a look at that cron job so if you type in cron tab slash e you'll get a cron config so let's just scroll down on that really quick so 10 and 9 here are just means 9, 10 in the morning, and then you can kind of just leave blanks here or asterisks if you don't have anything to specify for that. And bin slash bash is the, well, I guess we're not using like dash or, you know, corn shell, so. And then backup drives and then the actual script, which is called dot backup. So if we vim dot backup, we'll actually see our little cron job script. So at the top, if it's called on by a different directory, we just uh, have a change to the backup drives. We have it rsync our first raid one x5 to five drives, and of course two of them are rated, so we only really need three other commands. So rsync slash r will just copy over all the information from x5 uh, minus some like archival options. You can do rsync slash a for that and it's also recursive so I'll copy it to five, the 500 gigabyte RAID 1 drive and into the dot raid one x5 folder, which I put the little dot there so you can't see it with ls, and then the air log will be appended to dot log. And it does this for three drives up there, and then it does it for one drive for our raid x2 folder. And then at the end, it just pretty much redoes the status information with the updated status. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk too much about MD ADM, um, but I will show you that it's actually running on here. So if I just type in cat, or here, let me clear the screen first. If I just type in cat slash proc slash MD stat, uh, you can see there's a raid one directory on here between SDB1 and SDD1. But what I can show you, even though I'm rather new to MDADM, is FDisk. Because for FDisk, you're going to have to, well, format these into a Linux RAID. So just to show that off, we're going to first display our current config with FDisk slash L. And I'm going to pipe it into less. 
And as you can see, STB1 is Linux RAID Auto Detect, as well as STD1. So, let's actually go into formatting a drive. So, if you want to format something with FDisk, it's actually pretty easy. You can just do format, or you don't have to format, I'm sorry, you don't type in format. You type in sudo FDisk, then the name of the drive. We're just going to go with stb1, or stb. So, if you press M, you'll get help. But, in this case, you probably just want to create an do empty DOS partition. And you press N to create a new partition. And you want it to be a primary partition. And I'll just press defaults for these. And since it's only going to have one partition, I can just go with the defaults. I'm going to select no to this, but you would probably want to select yes. And after that, you can uh, specify a type. And if you press L, it'll list all codes. And if you go down to FD, it will be Linux RAID Auto Detect. And if you actually want to write it, you would uh, press Q. I mean, if you actually want to write it, you would press W. But I'm going to pre be pressing Q because I don't want to write it. So that's essentially how you would format it to Linux RAID Auto Detect. And I will link a decent MD ADM tutorial at the bottom. So I guess that really sums up the majority of my setup. And uh, if you need to look at a video for help on actually setting up like a static IP, I'm sure there's a lot of resources out there. Or if you're not on a local area network, I have a video that kind of just sums up how to set up an Apache server and everything else that you need for that. And how to make it relatively secure, with, you know, pre-shared authentication keys. But for the moment, I'm not too worried about that. For the future of this project, I might actually put an Apache server on here just to kind of host files, but it's probably still going to be on a local area network. And yeah, that's essentially my, uh, well, network attached storage unit setup in Debian. So I hope you have a good one and I hope you guys all stay safe. Peace.